Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar entitled Single Cell Multiomics, DNA Methylation and 3D Genome. I am Kenneth Day, a senior scientist here in Epigenetics Group at Zymo Research, and I will be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational webinar is presented by Lab Roots and brought to you by Zymo Research. Zymo Research is known as the epigenetics company and has specialized in products that facilitate epigenetics research for its customers for over 15 years. As our name implies, we offer a full end-to-end -end epigenetics approach for NGS-based profiling of chromatin, DNA methylation, and gene expression. Our workflow begins with nucleic acid extraction through bioinformatics support for our customers. Zymo remains as the gold standard for bisulfite conversion, especially for single-cell methylome analysis. The exploding number of published single-cell methylome studies show continued use of Zymo bisulfite conversion, whether by using traditional sort methods or on single-cell platforms. To learn more, please visit the link on your screen. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the Support tab found at the top right of the presentation window or report your problem by clicking on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. I now present today's speaker. Dr. Yeping Liu is an assistant professor from Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center in human genetics. He earned his PhD from the Epigenome Center at the University of Southern California, where he developed the innovative GnomeSeq methodology. He completed the postdoctoral training in the Kellis Lab at the Broad, where he contributed to the Roadmap Epigenomics and GTEx Consortia that pioneered definitions of epigenetic states across human cells and tissues. In tune with his record, his recent work unifies profiling 3D chromatin architecture by Hi-C together with bisulfite conversion to analyze methylation in the context of pads within single cells. To resolve structure at this level within single cells is a major advance for epigenetics research. Without further ado, I would like to point attendees to a more complete biography of our speaker located in the biography tab at the top of your screen. Dr. Liu, you may now begin your presentation. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Xiaoping Liu. Uh, it's my pleasure to present my recent work, Single Cell Multiomics. DNA methylation and 3D genome. So the research goal of my lab is try to bridge the gap between genetic variation and phenotypic variations. So the focus of my lab is actually on the epigenetic side. The reason we choose epigenetics is for its definition, it's a stable, heritable phenotype resulting from changes in chromosome without alteration in DNA sequence. So basically it has the two sides. Uh, one side is the phenotype. The other side is also, is, has the epigenetic modification on DNA sequence itself. So it's actually integrated signals from genome, of course the confounding issue, and as well as the environment and the disease. So analyze the signal from epigenetics will tell us how the genome and the disease-like symptom of phenotype variations, how they interact with each other, So in terms of epigenetics, there's many layers in different resolutions. So for uh, like one base pair of resolutions, the cytosine would get modified by DNMT or be modified by the TAD domain, uh, TAD, sorry, TAD, um, TAD family, they were demethylated. And after like about 100 base pair or KB resolutions, the DNA sequence will wrap around the nucleosomes. And in more than like KB to 25 KB resolution, you will see the loop, like the different regions of the genome will loop uh, around each other and functional regular elements will interact with each other. Mm -hmm. And in like 100 kb to macrobasic resolution, you will see the topological associated domain. So the, three, the genome, the linear genome will organize in the 3D genome way <clears throat> that will fold it into the nuclear memory. 
and in larger uh, resolution, you will see the territory and compartment uh, changes. So there's many layers and dif uh, in different resolution across the epigenomes. And gene methylation and 3D genome both played a very critical role for gene regulation. Like this is, has been known for decades. The demethylation in uh, cancers, they will silence the gene from, uh, demethylation promoter will silence the gene expression, and demethylation will activate the genes, and also for the imprinting regions, as well as the act inactivation, they are all associated with, and during the development, there's a different, there's two ways about the demethylation. So all these tell us, like the demethylation plays a very important role for gene regulation. And, and very recently, the DNA the 3D genome, also uh, more and more studies focusing on the 3D genome tells us the quantum loops also cares a lot, a lot about the gene regulation information, so, such as the enhancer, they will loop and activate the gene, which is about maybe 100 kb away in the downstream or upstream. Why in this interaction maybe get disrupted in cancers? Mm. Very recently, like uh, some group find out the DNA methylation, which is previously, uh, previously people think is correlated in local scale, like uh, correlated in just like CBG Island or like 100 base pile away from each other. People find out actually DNA methylation are also correlated with each other in different resolutions. Like John Hopkins group find out the genetic controlled methylation clusters and also Quinn John Glad in UCSD find out these methylation haplotype blocks. And even like for very recently in uh, by Casper Hansen's group in John Hopkins, they find out the long range correlation uh, by discovered by Bobby Kill methylation array data, they find that some of these correlation can happen even like 100 KB away. And um, if you look at their abuse calculate the correlation of DNA methylation and then get the first principal component, you find out there, uh, actually the eigenvector looks similar as high C is compartment A and B data. Why, if you, you are using the uh, mean methylation level, you don't see that uh, result. So which indicates the DNA methylation may have some of the long range correlations, but currently there's no existing, at that time when we published the uh, paper, there's no existing method that can directly match the long range interaction or epigenetic signal. Right now, of course, there's some like nano pore sequencing that you might be able to get some information from that. Um, so, for those of you who are not familiar with high C, I'll just briefly introduce what is the high C technology. Uh, basically, high C can physically link the DNA from the same allele over large genomic distance. There is a few steps of the high C. First, you after you get the nuclear eye, uh, we will cross link the uh, cross do the cross link. So the DNA, which is far away from each other, the proteins they will uh, cross link, and then after that you use the restriction enzyme to digest the DNA, uh, and after that you fill in and fill the biotin and uh, ligate it. Then so the region that is far away from each other will be ligated together. And then as you purify and digest, get rid of this reverse cross link and then uh, purify and pull down by biotin to enrich the, these long range interactions, you can use the pale and sequencing to get, the, uh, to get a measure of how frequently two regions in the genome they are interact with each other. So in like 2013, people find out since you are able to use this sequence information to measure the, how frequent these two genome, two regions of genome interact with each other, the genetic variation in these sequences will also be, be evaluated. So taking advantage of that, people are able to phase their genetics and get the phase genome by high C sequence. Uh, and in our, uh, our hypothesis is since the genetic variation can be linked by this high C uh, experiment, how about the genetic Genetic modi uh, epigenetic modification, such as the uh, DNA methylation in cytosine. So this is a, a collaboration uh, work with Dr. Bing Ren's group and Guo Dr. Guo Changli in Bing Ren's group. Uh, so we developed, take advantage of that, we developed this method high C technology, 
which is combined the high throughput, high C, the chromosome conformation capture, and the bisulfide sequencing together. So we're able to measure two modality at the same time in a single experiment. So the basic idea is simple, that the, the first few steps are similar as the in situ high C, but just after we get biotin uh, pulled down and in which the, the long range interaction, we'll do the additional steps that called bisulfide conversion. And then after bisulfide conversion, we'll do the pell end sequence. In addition to get the 3D genome information, we're also able to get the endogenous DNA methylation information at the same time. So there's some difficult challenges for analyze this data. Think about like the high C uh, interaction, high C data actually create a lot of uh, chimeric reads. And the bisulfide degradation actually sometimes also will create a lot of chimerical read. Uh, so this is similar as people when doing their RNA seq. If you try to map the reads across two different axon boundary and then try to figure out where they are coming from in the genome, in RNA seq you are able to get the help from this axon annotation. But in high C, actually the two regions of the genome they may be map the bases away from each other. So it's very really hard to map these regions if there, there's a lot of chimeric reads. So if we are using like, uh, so using traditional DM methylation mapping tools like BitMark or BWA math, uh, we actually get a very low mappability, uh, map reads. And considering that only a small proportion of this in situ high C map reads is about only 30% to 40% of these reads are actually uh, from long range interactive read to evaluate 3D genome. If we're uh, using the traditional way to map the uh, metal high C reads, we'll get very few reads that can uh, measure the 3D genomes. So we actually developed the uh, computational pipeline, uh, take advantage of the BWA, we did some modification on that and then allow us to map the, the reads, the chemical reads more efficiently uh, therefore, we're able to uh, get much better mapping uh, comparing to the traditional in situ high C without bisulfide treatment. So we also did some like simulations, like uh, the, the mapping accuracy comparing, uh, comparing with the traditional BISMARC is similar, uh, and the DM methylation calling are very similar as traditional uh, using the traditional way for mapping the reads. Okay, so after we conquer the analysis uh, challenges, the first thing we do is try to check whether or not our assay can recapture the high quality 3D genomes. So for those of you who are familiar with the high C analysis, uh, this is a typical log log 10 plot uh, in high C analysis. So basically we compare the metal high C and in situ high C from the same mouse ESL line. And then we measure the uh, the distance of the fraction of reads at a specific distance, and then we plot the distributions. The metal high C looks like similar as in situ high C, and we also match the library complexity even after bisulfide conversion. The metal high C library complexity looks similar as in situ high C in different biological replicates, and we also measure the 3D genome uh, in different resolution from the topological associate domains resolution like. 250 KB resolution to like 25 KB or 5 KB resolution that you are able to call the loops. They are largely similar um, as well as call the, so also we check quantified, uh, quantified the overlap of topological social domain uh, called by in situ high C and metal high C uh, as well as the competing loops called by Jewish pipeline. Uh, they're largely overlap with each other in two, between two technology in the same cell line. So, Second is we try to quantify where, when or we can recapture the high quality DM methylation levels. So the first thing we did was we checked uh, the DM, the CPG size we captured by these two assays. So the gold standard whole genome bisulfide sequencing from the same cell line, they capture slightly more CPG than the metal high C. Uh, and we also checked the DM methylation concordance at each C C single CPG size. They're largely similar between the two assays. Uh, so each dot here represents a single CPG, and then we measure the DMS methylation fraction between the whole genome bisulfide sequencing and methyl high C. The overall correlation goes to up to 0.7. Uh, we look at what is the 
uh, overall demethylation level between the two assays in the genome browser view that methylation uh, in methyl high C looks similar as whole genome bisulfide sequencing and gets decreases as this open competing region such as the island or CTCF occupied regions. So in conclusion, uh, our assay are able to capture the 3D genome and demethylation on the same DNA molecules. <clears throat> so since we're able to get the demethylation from each read, so we're able to actually uh, by the linked reads in two linked reads at the counting loops, the angle one and angle two were able to get demethylation on each read. Uh, so this is not so take advantage of that. This is a better example. Like the imprinting gene regions, the loop anchor regions were able to get the demethylation status that are linked in the 3D genome from the same DNA molecules. Therefore, we're able to calculate the correlation, the methylation correlation between these two regions uh, by their 3D genome status. Uh, so if we look at here, <clears throat> if we calculate the correlation, if we just shuffle the reads here, so basically we ignore the link status defined by the, the, the high C steps that we, shuff, we still use the same reads in the same region. So they have the same like average demethylation level, but then you shuffle the links between the pair reads, and then we calculate the correlation. The correlation, the shuffle correlation is much much lower than the uh, demethylation that's linked by these high C reads. So this tells us the uh, how is the correlation, how is demethylation concordance at the same DNA molecular comparing that average correlation in this genomic region. And we also measure how is that comparing with the random uh, genomic region in genome, and how is that uh, in the interchromosome reads. Uh, even in the interchromosome reads, it also shows much higher in this linked reads comparing to random shuffle reads. So we also check how is the this concordance of demethylation in different compartments in 3D genome. Like compartment A usually represents the active compartment, and compartment B represents like inactive compartment. So if we look at only just linked reads without any information uh, about their, how the, whether or not there's a loop there, we see there's no significant difference between, this, between these two compartments. But if we look at the uh, region that, they are, uh, that is called by counting loops, we see that there's actually significant differences, like we get much higher correlation in compartment A than compartment B, uh, since in compartment A there's more gene regulatory regions. Links and in different content states, we also observe like in these functional regions, they have a much higher uh, concordance of demethylation comparing with the random shuffle uh, links in the same regions. So this uh, demethylation concordance is how we measure in each. Even we get the information in, in the same DNA molecules. Uh, we further ask the question: What now we can measure this concordance in a single cell level? Which is the more uh, like uh, which is the more nuanced way to measure this uh, this observation. So the single cell demethylation profile uh, will actually help us to get the entire demethylation in the same cells and how is that concordant with each other in the uh, in the genome wide regions. And single cell high C is recently also provide a way you're able to calculate the 3D genome. Uh, information changes in each different single cell. So why are we, so the, right right now there's a lot of single cell monomics technology like single cell RNA seq. There's tons of single cell RNA seq technology and gene, gen, genomic sequence or single cell attack seq for measure the accessibility and demethylation to measure the uh, the genome wide demethylation and system modification or 3D genomes. So why are we studying the single cell monomics? The single cell monomics will provide you separate uh, the cells according to different levels of the epigenetic states or gene expression states. Uh, but biological system is more complicated. Uh, sometimes the joint analysis, we hope that joint analysis of multiple modality will tell you more information and helps you to get more nuanced cell types and uh, uh, intermediate cellular states by using this different modality information in single cell myomics. So currently there's multiple technology that able to do that, like single cell non 
uh, able to measure the content accessibility or the methylation and transcriptome, uh, sorry, the single cell, uh, triple omics like an MT seq or triple seq, uh, cool seq, they're able to measure three few different uh, omics information. And there's also a combination of RNA and proteomics or MMT or GNT to get the genome and the transcriptome information. So what we do here is extend, we extend our, we further extend our metal high C technology from bulk to single cell level. So we're able to simultaneously provide these two modality and same DNA molecular in the same single cells. <clears throat> so what we did is actually, uh, after we, the in situ high C is still in the bulk steps. After we saw the nuclei in 9612, then we do the bisulfide conversion in each well. And after we, uh, apply the post by sulfide DM application and single strand adapted re reaction, we use a dual index to ligate and do the uh, sequence. So the first thing we did is actually we measure, uh, after we merge this each of single cells, so we want to check whether or not we can get consistent information at box metal high C. So, uh, so we did that, we merged the cells in each single cell. Uh, so left corner is the merged single cell metal high C and the right up corner is the box metal high C. We actually, after we merged these about 100 cells, single cells, we get a similar correlation pattern as box metal high C. And after we get the first PC, the agent vector, we get a compartment information that shows similar measurement at the box high C. Uh, we also measured the, uh, the content interaction frequency between the box high C, uh, box metal high C, and merged single cell metal high C, and we we'll check the lock lock time plot. The metal high C in bark they're similar as we did in single cell metal high C at multi year cell line with two different culture conditions, and in the general Y, it looks similar between the metal high the single cell metal high C and the box high C. So. So we further actually comparing with other, with the, not only on the box side, we also compare at the, the other, like single cell level, sin, single cell monomics. So we first checked our consistency between the two uh, biological replicates in single cell metal high C, where uh, the stratified correlation coefficients are very high, the 0.99 uh, with each other, comparing with a single cell high, and which is similar level as a single cell high C. We further comparing the single cell metal high C together with the single cell high C in the same mouse yes cell line in the same culture conditions. In a more homogeneous, like two I culture uh, mouse yes cell, they look, they, their concordance show much higher uh, after we merge the 50 cells. And in serum, <coughs> the, uh, in serum, they, uh, which is in the more heterogeneous serum culture condition, which is the more heterogeneity condition, they have less concordance, but still showing high similarity between the single cell metal high C and the single cell high C. Also, we measure the demethylation levels in the serum and to I, people already know that the demethylation level would be very different. Uh, the red dot here represents the glo global demethylation level measured by whole genome bisulfide sequencing. They showed high concordance with the whole genome bisulfide sequencing uh, between our metal high C, single cell metal high C and the single cell whole genome bisulfide sequencing. So, so next thing is, uh, do, if we get the two modality information, can we use the, uh, this demethylation information to class the cell and get this, uh, the heterogeneity of cells? So what we do here is actually we sequence the <clears throat> mouse ES cell culture in two different conditions, the serum and two I, and then we uh, cluster this DM methylation based on, on one megabasis DM methylation density uh, in each cell. And then by doing the TSNA plot, we see that <clears throat> serum and the two I, which is marked as red and blue, they clearly separate with each other. And also the uh, single cell metal high C can reveal the heterogeneity in, inside the serum cultured uh, mouse ES cells. And after we actually we merge this um, DM methylation in each cluster, so we get a pseudo buck uh, methylation level in each cluster, and then we cluster this uh, pseudo buck demethylation level with external demethylation data from encode in across different tissues. 
And we see that class one is as we expected, QI are more uh, naive states. They are showing more uh, out, more distinct from the other tissue types. And class two and class three, they are clustering uh, in different group of the tissue types. And we further uh, did the, the geo analysis of this differential methylation region between the class two and class three uh, that uh, switch in the compartment B to compartment A level when we integrate the uh, 3D genome information. We find that actually this get active, more activated uh, regions in class three, they are enriched in limb morphogenesis, embryonic limb morphogenesis and limb development, which is consistent with the clustering result in panel B that class three are more uh, closed with the limb and neurofacial development uh, differentiations. And we have the one uh, example plot that's showing in class three and class two, there is a switch at Hox D region that switch from the, uh, from the class two, the uh, compartment B, which is a repressed space, compare, uh, switch to active states in class three, compartment A. And there's uh, interesting, there's also the the differential methylation region here at located at CTCF, the insulators, which indicates there's DMS concordance, demethylation changes together with the uh, insulator changes as well as the 3D genome changes. So uh, since we're able to get this cluster by demethylation, we further to check whether or not there's concordant changes of 3D genome there and genome wide uh, rather than a single uh, loci. So we find out like clusters, even with only sequence like few, very few cells, we, uh, we merge these cells uh, with equal similar random number of cells in class one, two, and three. We, we can see that in class two, they're class three, they're very different from class one. <clears throat> uh, so since we only sequence a very few number of cells, at the same, at almost the same time, just like uh, one month after our publication, uh, Dr. Joe Ackles' group, um, uh, they published a paper, they used a similar technology as we did, and they did in more cells. So we can clearly see here, as we do the TSNI of the two different cell types in mice, and you'll see that there, as you merge them, you'll see that uh, you clearly see there's a distinct DMS, uh, the 3D genomes from these two clusters if you classify uh, demethylation. Uh, and further, they apply this to the reveal the heterogeneity of demethylation and 3D genome to the brain. And you can clearly see here by using non CPG methylation of CPG methylation uh, <clears throat> in the neuron cells, uh, sorry, in the brain cells, <clears throat> in the human brain cells, you're able to distinct different types of neuron and different non neuron cells. And even by using quantum interaction, you will clearly see some of the separation at, at different cell types. And this is one of some of the uh, example of some uh, specific marker genes. So definitely this uh, in the future, joint clustering of this multi-omics with their spatial information is needed. So we're able to reveal more nuanced information here. So in summary, we developed an asset called methyl high C, which can combine in situ high C with bisol by sequencing to simultaneously capture the chromatin chromosome conformation changes and demethylation on the same DNA molecules. Um, we are able to generate consistent information to both in situ high C and whole genome by sulfide sequencing data from the same cell line. And demethylation is generally concordant between two DNA fragments that are spatially closed. And methyl high C can capture demethylation and chromatin architecture that's simultaneously in a single cell. And we're able to use methyl high single cell methyl high C to discover differential quantum information and demethylation in heterogeneous cells. So this project starts when I was a postdoc in Dr. Manon's Talis lab, and then finished when I was PI in Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Uh, thanks to support from my postdoc PI, postdoc mentor, Manon's Talis, uh, and our collaborator, Dr. Bing Yuan and Guo Changli, who finished the experiment. And thanks for the funding support for my salary and the project from NIH, Broad, and 40 Nucleon, uh, as well as my startup in Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me.
Thank you, Dr. Liu, for your informative presentation. Uh, we will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Um, our first question is, uh, it looks like the nuclear capture rate is around 40% after proximity ligation and nuclear sorting. So when you were to look across samples, uh, what, what is the rate of nuclei uh, that meet your thresholds across samples? So for instance, uh, if you had uh, you know, 20, 20, 250,000 reads and 10,000 contacts as your threshold, um, how many samples can meet that threshold? Yeah, this is uh, a uh, this is a very good question. Uh, actually, we did uh, one of the reviewer of this paper also asked a similar question, and I remember we also sh we uh, I can't remember clearly now, but we show this statistic in the supplement tables, like what is the uh, the overall contact in each cell. Uh, so generally, we get a very high quality of the library, uh, but indeed we filter out some of the uh, cells. We did like 296 wells, and then in end we have about 150 cells in total for the past hour QC. So I would say, yeah, a lot of, I mean, 150 divided by like 160, 96. So there's a large fraction of cells uh, we still keep in our analysis. I see. Thank you for your answer. Uh, so let's go to our next question. Um, is it possible to predict loop anchors from concordant methylation profiles alone? Yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, actually, we uh, this is actually the stuff we did when we do the uh, when we do the bark uh, part analysis, uh, and we try to see whether or not we can get uh, increased resolution and just call the loops based on this. Like uh, DMS, so we not only just call the loops by this DMSation concordance, we actually also use the uh, we use the DMSation concordance information to increase the resolution of loops calling. So to define whether or not there's a functional uh, concordant region in this loop anchor regions. So uh, actually, we didn't sequence deep enough. This is a power issue. Uh, if we are able to sequence higher and deeper enough, we'll get even we'll get a uh, very good result. But right now, since when we do the uh, preliminary analysis, it doesn't show, it, it shows in some regions we improve the, uh, the accuracy, but then later, we, since we uh, further extend it to single cell level, we decide just not incorporate that part into the final publications. Yeah. Great, thank you. So um, on to our next question. Um, are the concordant methylation values within TADS, are these regions typically hypomethylated? In other words, what percent of the contact sites are actually hypomethylated? So you mean like the, uh, the loop anchor region? How many percent of this loop anchor region are hypomethylated? Yeah, are they, are they always typically hypomethylated or do you ever see instances where they are not? Uh, usually they are hypomethylated. This loop, because we use a very stringent calling by Jewish or pipeline to call these key cups loops, uh, you only get like thousands of these loops in general Y, few, few thousands of these loops in general Y. They are very conservative and high in reach. There's the CDCF uh, contain loops and non-CDCF contain motif contain loops. Uh, they both show somehow their hypomethylation so next question, um, this actually kind of leads from the last, uh, the last question. So have you looked at transcription factor binding motifs or anything beyond just CTCF to see if there's any like say cell type specific transcription factors that may help, help organize these loops or is the resolution maybe uh, not quite good enough to see those types of things yet? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. So 
That's also the reason we try to narrow down and increase the resolution of Type D using the DMSH concordance, uh, narrow down further, narrow down the, and increase the resolution, and then to check whether or not there is such a transcription factor binding site. It's definitely a very good direction to go, uh, but at this paper, we didn't mention that. Great, thank you for your answer. Um, one more question. Um, so, when you use the single cell methyl high C method, uh, particularly in your presentation, you've shown that it looks at, uh, you know, you can look at cellular differentiation effects, like during embryogenesis or looking at differentiation of embryonic stem cells. Have you tried uh, to look at, say, somatic cells from adult tissues to see if this could be used for looking at, say, disease states in, in adult tissue? Yeah, definitely. That's, that's the, uh, I, I believe, the next step both of Bean's lab and my lab were doing. So when you look at the CPGs in your single cell uh, methyl high C, uh, what percent um, of, are those CPGs uh, in common across the captured nuclei? Yeah, it's it's very sparse. Oh. I I have to admit it. This is the 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 problem in like single cell deamethylation. Single it's similar as the single cell Holtzman bisulfide sequencing. Yeah. Uh, the data is sparse, so if you're doing like like single CBG size comparison across the cells, is is really challenging. So without imputation, it's really challenging. That's why the main purpose. Yeah. Any analysis we show here is actually we use the one MAC basis, uh, non overlap window, and then do the do the class ring. And some groups like yeah. the group, they use the 100 KB non overlap window to do that. So that will might get these problems. But indeed, that's yeah, that's a challenging part. That's a challenge, yeah. So this is more of a technical question. Um, we noticed in one of your in your recent publication that you used two different bisulfite kits uh, from Zymo Research, and we're kind of curious: uh, is there uh, what was your purpose in using two different kits? Oh, you mean like the in, in our publication, the the bark we the bark part we use gold, and in the single cell part we use lightning, right? Yeah, you think you use gold and and direct? And, and direct, sorry, sir. yeah, direct. Yeah, this is just that's okay. Yeah, it's it's just at the time. Uh, this is actually also I asked Wu Chang. Actually, he will be a better person to answer this question. He told me like at that time they just happened to have a gold kit there, so he tried that. But then later in the gold because the gold kit is uh, it's good. It's it's okay for box level, but for single cell level, their input is even lower. Uh, and we want to like we actually didn't. So so later he he switched to the direct. Uh, like Zymo kit, yeah. I see, I see. Yeah. Thank you for your answer. So I think we may have time for one more question. Um, this is more of a kind of a global question. Uh, what is the future, you believe, for single cell methyl high C? We've touched on it a little bit. And what are some of the research questions or projects that you believe this method will make an impact? Yeah. So this is a very general question. <clears throat> it's also one of the direction we are uh, going to do. Is uh, so definitely there's few direction to go. Like one is you can increase the modality, get an uh, other additional modality involved in experiment, uh, and uh, in terms of experiment side or in terms of the uh, analysis side. As I mentioned in the presentation, like joint clustering of cells. Uh, Include, in, including their spatial information is challenging. So definitely it's worth to go. Uh, and in terms of the applications, so I think Joaga's group and Dr. Binner's group are doing that right now is extend this application to different tissue or cell types. Uh, there's a lot of ketogenetic tissues such as cancers or like brains, which Joaga already did in preformed cortex. And there's also many other tissue types. So uh, there's a lot of applications, and the, the the problem is right now our understanding about the 3D genome heterogeneity in different cells is limited. So for the heterogeneity in DNA methylation, people already noticed that in the last few years, like since 2014, in the single cell uh, DNA methylation, uh, single cell whole genome bisulfide sequencing was invented, people 
look at different cell types and find out uh, there's ketogenity in different, like Joyce's group, the pioneer work find out in different layers of the neuron, they show in different DNA methylation. So uh, maybe in future, when we know more information, uh, more function about the 3D genome changes, uh, we'll get more advanced application for that, that we are able to simultaneously capture this interaction between the two layers, <clears throat> and of course, many other layers. Great, thank you so much for your answer. Um, yeah. Thank you again, Dr. Yaping Liu, for your time today and for presenting your very important research. Uh, we would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Zymo Research, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of your registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, thanks for attending and goodbye.